Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good day, free enterprise fans around the world. My name is Possum Morpheus, and I am joined by Angie Dave today for a fantastic 3-3 three three matchup, a battle for third place in the Artemis Bow group. Dave, how you doing this afternoon? I am doing great this afternoon. Excellent. Well, we have this fantastic matchup, like we said, between John Burkhead and Mechalink. Uh, John Burkhead controlled his own destiny for a while in this group, uh, jumping out to an early 2-0 record. Uh, has since come back down to earth a little bit at uh, a 3-3 three three record. Mechalink, meanwhile, needed one of those wild NFL playoff type situations to get to this point at 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Found himself at 1-3 a little while back, needed a couple of surprise victories, uh, needed a little bit of help to get here, but has found his way into a tiebreak for the right to play in a play-in match to make brackets. So Mechalink uh, definitely back from the dead, if you will, on this one. Uh, I'm super excited. This is a rematch. Uh, John won the first one, but uh, this is by no means decided yet. I'm very excited for this. And Mechalink going, showing us all you need to do is make it to the dance and see what happens from there. Yeah, uh, if, if St. Peter's taught me anything from their uh, their March uh, Madness run in the uh, NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, anything is possible, especially this year. Uh, speaking of possible, I guess that means a Purim start is also possible, and that's uh, slightly disappointing, but here we are. It's okay. We have some, uh, some potentially spicy objectives to make up for that. Uh, some moon objectives some Earth objectives, a lot of spelunking going on, a required harp, well done Harumph. Uh, to no one's surprise, Harumph being the leader of the Twin Harp fan club, of course we get required harp, uh, and uh, tons of buttons for our tracker ground flyer to push as well. Yeah, I'm honestly glad to see both Sealed Cave and Magnus in here, if I'm a runner. Means uh, I can't, you know, lose because my opponent decided to do a spicy check to in one of them that I decide to fade. Yeah, I would agree with that. We actually have some of the longer checks, the more out of the way checks as objectives. So things like the Tower of Zot, if you already have good characters and you don't need to go there, that's usually a terrible check. Uh, Sealed Cave, Twin Harp, Baron Throne, Liberate Baron, or Baron Basement Throne, Liberate Baron, they're all long checks with cutscenes. As a runner, you're happy that they're objectives because it means that you know both of you have to sit through them and you don't have that feels bad moment when you make this three, four, five minute check and it comes back, oh, hey, uh, this had nothing. Sorry, have a nice day. You're now behind three minutes. You don't have that same feeling, which as a runner is very comforting. Uh, green and tie. So uh, Dave, with a Purim start, obviously we don't know the secondary character yet. But what's your, uh, what's your general thought process on where to loot, what early checks you want to make, and things like that? Uh, early on, I'm looking to maybe see if I can find a heroin rope. Uh, failing that, get some J items, try to get a check or two done. Especially with this uh, Yang to back her up. This party needs levels. Yeah, this party's either going to want levels, or is going to want a hook from the other freebie to give an adamant armor. Uh, right away, starting with that pink tail. I did see, I think there was a couple Zeus Rages in there, though. So that will at least help with a couple early checks. But this is actually the kind of party, I think to your point, a Heroin Robe does a lot of work. This is not the type of party you take to Eblin, though, on average. Uh, they can't use Tier 6 and 7 stuff. They need Tier 4 and 5. So I'm curious if either of our runners opt for some non-traditional loot routing on this uh, this opener. So what are you thinking with loot routing? Maybe some Damsey and Basement checks? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Damsey and Basement, the public treasury and things like that with this party. Baron Town as well. Just anything that's not like tier six and seven. Although <laughs> seeing an edge <laughs> might make me reconsider that. Uh, but we do see a power staff and a power shirt in Damsey and Basement. That honestly is huge for John Burkhead early on for this Porum. Yeah. Uh, that that's plus twenty five strength on a porum. That's no joke. And it's a ninety nine accuracy weapon. That cannot yeah. be understated. Yeah, that's honestly porum is online, and you have your early game beater to get through the first couple of checks. 
So the Dampsey and Basement route paying off in spades for, for John Burkhead here. That's an example of, you don't necessarily need to loot high tier places with this kind of party. Power Staff is, what, a three? Yep, I think Power Staff's a three, but it is arguably one of the best threes. And we did see Mechalink trying to be a, a little bit bold there going after that Bygan to try to, to spike that edge early. Uh, Bygan in that first spot's going to be a little punchy and mean. Uh, well, there's a Ninja <laughs> Sword, though. This seed really wants our runners to get that edge online and online in a hurry. Yeah, that, that's a, about as clear a signal as it can give. And it looks like we're not getting a public treasury check from Mecha. Uh, going to take that Ninja Sword, going to take that Pink Tail. Going to do a little shopping here in Troya while John Burkhead's picking up his Ninja Sword. So if you're in John Burkhead's shoes, having found that Power Staff Power shirt, where are you checking next? Or first, I think I I'm straight to Hobbs. Yeah, I want to see that other character. And then probably to... Uh, to Antlion and maybe Fabul after that. I'd be a little scared of Baron in two because it, your Porum's not back road with what we found yet. Also, there's a ninja shirt as well for Edge. If, if our runners can get a get their hands on that Edge sooner than later, it's going to be great. We do see Mecha now, though, with that information of Edge going and looting, uh, excuse me, looting um, Eblen, which I don't hate now that we have that knowledge. I think before that knowledge, it's a it's a tough sell. But with that knowledge, I like this. I did see John Burke had pick up. Oh, John Burke had has a, picked up an archbow with the lid arrows, so that's back row for for Porum. Mm. And with the defense the power shirt provides, that might be enough to squeeze through a uh, a Baron in and Baron in two. Would be interesting to see. That is a sizable amount of defense. I. I I don't know if there was any headgear picked up. I think we saw a ninja hat and a bandana. Um, so not too, too bad. I haven't seen anything terribly spicy in in Dublin yet, except that uh, trap chest in a nice vanilla location. Yeah, trap chest, probably not a go yet. Uh, we do know that both runners saw those cabins and tents now in Troya. Uh, Mecha opted to not purchase either of them yet. Uh, it looks like we have some Ether 2s, some Cure 2s. John Burke had loading up 20 Cure 2s. Uh, not a terrible idea given the, the early game power of Cure 2s, how much they heal for versus the actual Cure 1 and Cure 2 spell. Right, you don't need much more than a Cure 2 to full heal this party as of right now. Yeah, absolutely agree. And looks like we are getting a Hobbs check. Uh, and looks like there was a Grimoire as well in Eblin, which could help out Mecha. Uh, maybe heading back to Troy to pick up some of those tents and cabins, uh, knowing that they're there. Or even a Black Belt Gi, which he saw, uh, could definitely do some work. And meanwhile, we have John Burkhead heading up Mount Hobbs. And uh, he is going to be greeted with a new character and a Bosch check. And that new character is an Edward, and that sparkle doesn't peak the sparkle, which is a little interesting to me. I would want to know if that's Wyvern. Yeah, agreed. I want to know what boss is off the table. Or is this something I can take right now? Get some XP on this party. Yeah, it's one of those where it's like, oh, I don't want this character. Which is absolutely a defensible position. No one's going to want that Edward. But that boss knowledge... Um, just if Ogo's off the table, you can prepare a different way for fights. If Wyvern's off the table, you can prepare a different way for fights. Plague, D-Lunar, Pale Dim, less impactful, but I would really want to know the uh, the boss up there. So this could be a potential advantage mecha on information alone uh, if he at least gives us the peek at the boss. Agreed. Also, if it were D-Lunars, uh, that was a stack of Cure 2's purchase. You could just Cure 2 them to death. That's also very true. Speaking of those D-Lunars and being cured to to death, uh, actually it looks like we're going to get some power punch with uh, with a fire claw here. No offensive use yet, but we are getting a power bonk on Yang here. Uh, let's see if the Berserk proc hits. It does, so some nice little tech there from John. And the D-Lunars are de-gone. <laughs> very well put.
And that is De Luca key. So there we go. Uh, John Burkhead getting our second key item, first progression type key item. Uh, while Mecha Link is joining him now in the Antlion Cave, uh, and we'll soon be picking up his uh, Luca key as well. And then we'll and see that, where our runners go from here. And that means we have a required Antlion Cave tonight. Yeah, that is true, as Sealed Cave is one of the objectives for our runners. So, John Burkhead probably heading over for Woolway. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's a very conservative, very traditional route to go Hobbs, Antlion, Fabul, or Antlion, Hobbs, Fabul. Uh, Baron in two normally presents more of an issue, so you try to steer clear of it until you have to. And you might even see John head up, uh, up Ordeals before heading to Baron. In Mecha's case, as soon as he has the power to reasonably get through Baron, knowing that Edge is there, He's going there. So it's going to definitely lead to some divergence amongst the runners just on that information alone. Uh, I'm not sure your thoughts on this. I would consider ordeals just because Yang likes levels. Not only does Yang like levels, um, but Porum likes Berserk. Uh, and Porum does learn Berserk fairly early. Uh, John is going to be down the XP from Hobbs. And probably going to be down the XP from the officer here as well, uh, unless he opts to kill the officer. So poor I'm going to be a little behind on the XP curve for Berserk, but Berserk and Exit are the two early things you really want to pick up with Poor. Yeah, opting to throw a J at him here, just saying I went through this fight. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. I don't think Kick would have done it there, so I think using that J item is. Uh is very sound and chat pointing out the illusions that John Burke had picked up. I think it was seven of them. I could saw definitely seven. help with Baron in two as well. It's a item you don't think about much. All right. Fabul did not need defending unless you really care about your goon armors, which this current party and everyone we've seen so far does not, as we've seen Ed, Edge, Yong, and Poram. I can think of a good use for Dragoon Armor. Dollar bills? You know it. <laughs> you can always use more money. Boxes are, Bacchus wine isn't cheap. Very much so true, but it does look like John is headed over Baron Way. Uh, so we'll see if he has the means to get through this. Uh, going for raw speed over power with this Yong, taking the bandana off and putting the ninja hat on. Uh, trying to contest this first spot. It's definitely going to make him better versus the second spot because it is variable agility between four and seven. This first spot's going to be a little tricky though, but opting for a Zeus Rage, hopefully Porum lives here and barely does with 39 health, uh, while Mecha Link also picks up his Dragoon Armor. And we know Porum has ways to just miraculously survive fights. Oh, oh, might want that Zeus Rage back now. I don't think we found a Thunderclaw, which means this is going to be really difficult to get through. Yeah, that Zeus Rage would help a lot. Was that 2,800 damage? Yeah, just under 3,000. I think it's going to be a minimum of like 2,400, maximum of probably 3,200. Um, that's damage you're just going to need against that... Uh, that Odin, and I think that's a really heads up reset by John Burkhead, to be completely honest. Knowing now that that Zeus Rage is just too important, uh, and we see him not using it here. So he's uh, he's going to retain that Zeus Rage for the second fight, which I think is objectively correct in this case for him. And looks like Mechalink's about to dive into the same fight. Coming out of that fight in good in good condition too. Yeah, uh, Yang maybe even able to take a punch here, which would be huge. Uh, we'll see. Zeus Rage comes out right away. Porum is down. This seems like a pretty speedy Odin, and that was a pretty bad low roll. I think this is going to have to be redone because that's two punches already. Uh, this is. 
This is a fast Odin. I think this Odin rolled seven out of the four to seven variable agility. I, I don't realistically see a way through here between the low roll and Porum being on the ground. Yeah, this Odin's a guaranteed wipe. That this spot has way more magic than you would think. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe John takes another crack at it. Uh, Odin, we'll say Odin three, runner zero right now. Uh, Odin definitely proving to be the final boss at the moment. Uh, definitely a, a fairly spicy, uh, spicy open for our runners to have to deal with. Uh, and I believe Underground is either here or Ordeals. So I think both runners are really going to want that edge and probably stick around and, and try to find a way through this. Yeah, the only thing I'm thinking... Well, Mechalink's got a Grimoire, so may just keep taking... Never mind. I was thinking, just keep taking cracks until it rolls uh, Bahamut. That's a tough call, though, because <laughs> Mech is yeah, not a... really in a great position to get through the first fight. Uh, has to retain that Zeus Rage as well. There's a 2592. Neither runner having great luck on their Zeus Rage rolls right now. Uh... Yeah, this is a tricky one. Because you definitely want to get this edge. You definitely want to get this key item check. But it's going to start hey. eating at you a little bit the more and more attempts and time it takes. Neither runner is going to realize that the other one is struggling with this. Hey, you know what would have helped with this? He's sitting on Hobbs. That's true. Eddie with his Zeus Rage. Just wait for two Odins. 20, 30, 68. Yeah, again, another not great roll. We do have Young Berserked here, though, but immediately <laughs> down. That and is the, cruel. That and is the so damage Pora did berserking him was, <laughs> yep. the, was the difference. Yep. Uh, John is saying I'm good is going to head over to Ordeals. Uh, yeah, this is, I agree <laughs> completely with this. This is a, yeah, you've, you are, this is a uh, no one to fold him type of situation. Yep, it, it was a good attempt by both runners. Uh, Mecca has already left. John has also left. So uh, Odin, uh, what's the Odin count at? Five? Five? Zero for runners. Yeah, Odin definitely is the uh, the victor so far. We do see Mechalink going back, though. So wanting a little bit more action from this edge. Uh, let's see if, uh, if Mechalink is able to be our first runner through. I think Mechalink resetting to... Okay. Reset to Fabul, which was a save before the current save. Maybe there was something that was over. Oh, Mechalink wanted the second Zeus Rage back. Ah, okay. That makes sense, because you can just queue up two Zeus Rages and you're through. Yeah, this makes and perfect it, sense. It was only a Dragoon Armor, so that's pretty heads up as well for Mechalink. Uh, we'll be able to get through as long as nobody dies on the way there. Uh, unfortunately, not healed up heading into this first fight which could be a little awkward uh but everybody dodges so that's good sylph not exactly yeah, ideal <laughs> the grimoire had other plans now and this we... is uh, a bit ragged now on john burkhead's side we see a mom bomb and the damage coming out from the explosion is not a trivial amount at this first spot i think it's like 120 or so which is a little dangerous that said, after this, the fights, as long as you can get the bombs down, those bombs punch for negligible damage. Well, if you berserk them, they hit a little harder, though. <laughs> so, negligible times 1.5 is what you're saying. <laughs> that Zerk bomb would disagree, it whiffed. Uh, the issue here starts to become, though, if these bombs don't drop quick enough, they are going to have enough health to wipe out this party. Uh, we now have two Berserk Grey Bombs. That's, I think that's actually fine, because they can't explode. Oh, that's true. I bet the Berserk does prevent explode. So yeah, that's actually really good. So John is through. A Mechalink, unfortunately unable to get the second uh, Zeus Rage off, 
and does fall victim to uh, to Odin's mischievousness, if you will, at Baron and Two, yeah. as the count is now six to zero in the favor of Odin. Yeah, Odin uh, taking after his good brother, or his father's blood brother, depending on which version of the myth you're talking about. I don't know, be his blood brother, I guess. A little mischievous. Just a little. Speaking of just a little, this is just a little bit of a problem at the back attack spot on our deals. I dare say Keblin and Queblin. Shoutouts to Ent for the naming scheme on that. Uh, yeah, not going to be too much of a problem. This is kind of a, a wait and see fight. And onward we go. Uh, I did see issue... on Mecha's side, uh, the game continuing to be a little trolly. Uh, gave Bahamut on the first spot. Mecha probably thinking, where was that a few tries ago? Well, Mecha is through, though. Those two Zeus Rages come out. Odin is down. So that is, uh, that's good news for Mecha, for sure. That is an edge, which is huge, and a magma key, which is the logical underground access. Uh, so that is, well, potentially logical underground access. We don't know where the hook is as of yet, but that is huge for, for Mecha Link. Um, that's arguably the best early game character not named Fusoya. Having a ninja sword already and underground access, that's really, really big. I was really hoping Edge is starting up with a Thunderclaw. <laughs> that would have been... Fantastic. Oh, are we going to get kick strats here? If ever there was a time. Yes. Need one more, though. They're not going there yet. Should be fast enough, though. This is a very slow spot. Opting for a power punch, though. And a bonk on Calbrena. Meanwhile, Mecha Link, unsurprisingly, headed underground with the new reward of the Magma Key. Uh, and John Burkhead, with that Twin Harp, is through uh, Mount Ordeals. I am curious to see if John Burkhead takes a random encounter to get Berserk on Porum naturally here. Or if he opts to just continue on through with the, the Power Staff as his source of Berserk. Uh, while Mecha Link is going to have access to potential Sirens which could be huge to really get his party going. Yeah, we have two characters in this party who really like levels. Yeah, Yang wants him for the, the strength multipliers in particular. Porum wants him to learn spells. Edge they're far less important for, but the other two level is going to be huge. Uh, and we see John heading down ordeals with no random encounters. So that tells me that we're probably getting another attempt at Baron Inn as opposed to the Twin Harp. Because without Berserk, that Twin Harp is not appetizing at all. Uh, unless he's going to continue to rely on the Bonk Staff as his source of Berserk. Because he is one level shy at this current time. Well, if, if John Burke has 1400 XP away from leveling, we'll just pick it up from Baron Inn 1 and have it for the Odin. That's also very true. Uh, I am a little surprised here to see the power shirt remain on Yang and not head over to Porum, given that she has the lit arrow and archer bow now. Uh, I think that would be a fairly sound move to get that power shirt over since she will do more damage than Yang will right now. Uh, but also understandable to try to keep him alive so that he's able to get the Zeus Rage off. We see some of our shops, and th those are the sirens you mentioned. Yeah, that's honestly the most important thing that could have been found for Mecha Link here is, uh, is the sirens there. That's exactly what he needs to try to make up some time. Now, again, he doesn't know it, and there's a cursor ring, too. That's wow. also a wonderful find. So, uh, Tamra with the goods. But both of our runners are going to feel pretty behind at this point. Um, because of their struggles with that Odin. So for Mecha Link, he's going to be happy that it paid off with the, the Magma Key and with those Sirens right away to get those extra levels to then really tear through the seed. 
Uh, we do see those illusions coming in handy for John Burkhead, though. Gets them up on both characters, and he is also going to be through. Yeah, this... Get his edge and his magma key. Yeah, that, that's going to be a few more punches and shots, and Odin hasn't even raised the sword yet. Yeah, that's the third swing, so this fight is over. Pour him with the kill shot there, and uh, we are done with the overworld for John Burkhead, other than that twin harp, uh, while Mechalink is going underground to the Fey March, picking up a few items on the way, and going to give us our first key item check here in the Fey March as well, which is going to be a hook. Less important that it's a hook by itself, more important because that's an adamant armor, y'all. Pinktail already on the table. Yeah, so every second John Burkhead's not going to the Fey March is, well, less time than Mechalink, he's going to have an adamant armor. Yeah, the one thing for John is he is up that ordeals check, so he does have that twin harp, which is required. Uh, there is a world, a very realistic one, that Mechalink fades that uh, that ordeals for quite a while. Uh, now, this is a very interesting situation we find ourselves in. That is a Golbez at the Queen spot. That's extremely doable if, and only if, you can get a single Star Veil off. If okay. Edge is fast enough... This is great stuff. If Edge is not fast enough, this is not happening. Yeah, the good news here, this fight has very high magic. Golbez will very swiftly uh, turn himself to ash, uh, zap himself, virus himself, all the, all the good stuff. Yeah, so what has to happen here is Mecha Link needs Edge to live and not get eaten by the Snake. And then also needs to win the 50-50 where the initial virus hits the last character remaining that's not Edge. That's a wipe right away. Um, Edge being down there just means you're not going to have the agility to combat this spot, which is naturally 66. Um, and this is just simply a very corner case situation of knowing exactly what you need to get through this. Uh, this is just going to be be brutal look at these numbers and look at the speed Bye bye <laughs> Golbez is rude y'all gotta get that star veil up or this is a it, I want... it's, it's not doable I wonder if Mecha Link's Porum has a diamond ring on that the lift 3 did less damage than the virus or Tiara one of the two uh, or a Tiara good call and uh, may very well uh, have that I think there was mention of a Tiara and a cursed ring in chat for Mecha Link. So Tiara may have been picked up as well. Maybe not from a shop, but from looting. We do see John Burkhead headed over to Dwarf Castle. So kind of as you alluded to, every moment that John is not getting that hook, uh, John is not getting a, a an adamant armor. So going to do some more shopping, which is totally understandable as well. We'll see if he peeks in and tries to get cheeky with Dwarf Castle, or if this is just... Uh, Kind of poking around in the underworld. Yeah, I might just be looking for you know, samurai bow, samurai arrow, maybe ninja sword. It says no to mute and charm arrows. Uh, says no to the rest of the shop here. Uh, we'll see if he gives us a peek at dwarf one. He does not. So this is just a shopping trip for John Burkhead. Meanwhile, Mechalink heading back to Fabul and going to give us our first peek at Sheila one. Uh, oh, no, he's going to launch the hook or the hoverboat, and get his uh, pink tail turned in for adamant armor, which I, I absolutely agree with this. <laughs> the sooner you get an adamant, the better. Now, is there a, is there a case we made for doing Sheila 1 first? I, so what I would do here is I think launching is fine. You drop it off uh, right in front of Fabul. You pick up Sheila 1, and if it's the rat tail, then you do both. It's just a second or so more animation time, but saves you a potential flight back. So we'll see what Mechalink opts to do, whether he drops it in front of Fabul or if he drops it uh, at Silvera and then goes and checks it immediately. And it looks like Adamant Armor is fresh on the mind and is going to just take that Adamant Armor immediately. I don't I don't blame him. Uh, Adamant Armor shiny. Of course you want yeah. it. Oh, I, I mean, I would... I would race brain this, and I would very much so tunnel vision give me adamant armor. <laughs> so, like, it's easy to think of these things and how to optimize it when we're sitting up here not having the pressures of racing. 
but when you're in the heart of you know the the race it's very difficult to think of the optimal way to route things when there's the big shiny thing in front of you uh john burke had also opting not to take on anything in the fame arch so is going to be headed back up to the overworld possibly also thinking why would i bother with this now when i know i have an adamant armor in tow uh i'll be back for that fame arch could be part of the the thinking there maybe for both mecha and john the second most dark imps and i didn't see coffins so uh that's gonna be a slow fight even with hourglasses yeah, the only way realistically through that would be like an hourglass and some mute arrows or an assassin dagger, excuse me, uh, Medusa arrows or assassin dagger, and I don't think we've seen either of those yet. So those dark imps really aren't on the table for quite a while. And they're very doable. They're free. They're just slow. Yeah. It's a can I versus should I situation where the answer is can you? Yes. Should you because of time? No. This is a speed run. We are racing here. Uh, the faster we go, the the better we are. Uh, so yeah, the, the runners are going to be very cognizant of that. I will fully admit I've been caught by that many a time. Oh, we all have. <laughs> uh, John Burkhead is flying and continuing to fly. Uh, went right past the Adamant Grotto to Fabul. Does drop the airship outside of Fabul. It was a scenic route. Yeah. A little bit of vacation. And, you know, as one does. And Mechalink is redoing Fabul for that Dragoon armor. Um, maybe just wants the cash from it or the progression. Uh, but that was not a required check. So, uh, again, the Dragoon armor, it does represent like 20k in cash. It's not terrible. Uh, oh, baby, that's a that's... darkness crystal, y'all. <laughs> well, we got an adamant armor. We got a ninja ninja. A ninja, 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 I guess. <laughs> Let's go to the moon. Yeah, there, I, there's definitely an argument to head to the moon as soon as that pink tail's turned in for John, and as soon as it is acquired, uh, the darkness crystal that is for Mecha. The potential issue for Mecha here is he is being pushed further and further away from ordeals. Um, I know he did ordeals, didn't he? I no, there's no twin harp lit up on Mecha's side. Okay, right, right. So he has not done ordeals. So he's just getting further and further pushed away. No Tella, no Cecil. Uh, and the longer he is pushed away from ordeals, the scarier this gets because we know it is required. Agreed. So the best case scenario for Mecha is that Cecil's waiting for him on the moon. Yeah. Uh, even Fusoyo would be fine on the moon because that would likely drive you in a sense to ordeals as well it's three very quick boss checks uh to get that foo powered up also so tell us cecil or foo all three of them could very much so help with uh with driving our our runners especially mecha to ordeals and john burkhead's just going to go launch the whale and probably show us who's up there yeah uh i'm a little surprised and i don't know if he has exit yet on Porum, and this may be why uh, but I'm a little surprised John did not dip down into uh, Eblin Cave while he was there. So I, I have to assume he doesn't have Exit on Porum yet, if that's the case. Um, whereas Mecha we see is diving right away. I think he does, but I also fairly certain I saw one of our owners buy Exits. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, so if you have an Exit, I like dipping this because it's an extra gated character check. And that's why uh, that evil wall is also really good information to know that you don't have to deal with it. But that's a Fusoya. Uh, that's not the guy, but that's still a Lunarian. And they're pretty dang good. And that, that's not the guy, but it's still a very good guy. Yeah, and that's huge for Mecha because that is, at least from my view, a driver back to ordeals. Because that's three bosses, that's nine spells that's uh, that's real good impetus to go up the mountain. Oh, wow. Like, and virus at, at 900? Nine, that, that's a spell list. <laughs> my heavens. Where are those when I pick up foo? <laughs> for real, my dude. I'm always waiting for like 14, 16, 1800 for those spells. Holy moly. <laughs> I, I've that's... seen the 16, 17, 18 virus quake nuke happen. Yeah. 
That, now that is actually bad for Mecca, as wild <laughs> as that sounds. And oh, okay, here we'll just yeah. everybody gets embarrassment or riches. There's Cecil on one side, <laughs> there's Fusoya on the other. So this is interesting. Um, Mecha Link, because that's Quake and Virus already on Fu, may be driven still away from ordeals because those two spells are so good. John is meanwhile going to be driven back towards Eblin because you're going to want to look for the sword for the guy. And there's no better place to look for it than Eblin Castle. So we may see him go that route. We may see him go the hairdryer's route. Uh, my personal favorite at this point in the tournament. Um, yeah, I wonder not why. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of good options for both of our runners now, and Mechalink does go up ordeals. Uh, and we do have Bacchus on the moon as well. So a ton of action here in the last five minutes. Uh, just an absolute ton. We might see Bur John Burkhead head over, take those hair dryers. Just while, while you're up here, that's effectively a nope. Yeah, I think he's going to play the odds here. I would fully expect an Eblin Castle dive here. Uh, to try to find a sword. It is better odds on average than the hairdryer's chest. Um, it's not as good for XP, but it's better potential payout on tier 8 items, which is all you really care about with a Cecil. There's no bad tier 8. Uh, Adamant is great. Excal's great. Crystal Sword's great. Uh, so I, I think we will definitely be seeing a dive into Eblin to try to find value uh, and i think we're even going to see the adamant armor is going to go right on to cecil from the looks of this and the power shirt is going to stay on uh on edge no the adamant on the cecil well doesn't look like we're getting the adamant on anyone that's a little interesting yeah i was thinking even though it's not Giving you more offense. Uh, 600 HP Cecil with Adamant, that's going to cover everyone forever. Yeah, I, I would just want it for cover strats. <laughs> I absolutely agree with that. Um, little surprising there, maybe forgot, but we'll soon realize it. Uh, as soon as someone gets punched, namely Cecil, for more than like one damage. Uh, but we are going to go fishing. Uh, this has been one of the plays of the tournament, is Eblin Castle fishing, playing the lottery, if you will and trying to hit those holy swords and those adamant armors. And there's a a statistically higher chance to hit them here than anywhere else in the game but the moon and the giant, I believe. I believe it's 34% for a tier 8 here. It's a lot. 30, 38, I think. It's like nearly 40, if I remember right. It is super high. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, John, forgetting that he swapped over from the, the power staff to the uh, the bow and arrow with Porum and decided to just shoot to edge. Show no mercy, Porum. Uh, <laughs> Porum didn't forget. That was, <laughs> there was clear intent behind that shot. Uh, meanwhile, Mecha is quickly through Mom Bomb, quickly through King Queen Eblin. The, uh, the Quake spell doing work for Mecha Link there. Uh, getting him through ordeals much, much faster than John Burkhead was able to. Gets his twin harp. Meanwhile, John Burkhead is through the first of the trap chests, the Mad Ogres. Arguably the easiest and least scary. Gets that Berserk and Exit on Porum as well. And is rewarded with Artemis Arrows. So that's uh, that's seven a, a tier 7 item, but not, not what you would want. Not a terrible reward with uh, Wyvern still in the pool, and yeah, just Wyvern. Yeah, because I think Pale Dim is on Hobbs. I guess you have the Dark Elf uh, Dragon form, maybe a sneaky alt gauntlet somewhere on the moon. There's a couple of ways it could play in, but yeah, the, the Arty Arrows are pretty much a, a Wyvern specialty now. And maybe for some eggs underground, too. True, it allows for very easy one-shotting of eggs. Can't You can't discount that. There is the Adamant on Cecil. I think he might have been waiting for at least something like a defense sword here, which was located. So I, I don't hate that. Um, now he can do some real damage with more than just edge. 
I will but see I, if you... Go ahead, Dave. I, will, I guess we'll be seeing what he gets from these next two spots. We'll see if Mecha decides to go to the moon and pick up his guy. Yeah, Mecha's in an interesting position. Uh, he doesn't really need another power spike yet. Uh, there's a boomerang for John Burkhead, which is nice for that edge. But Mech is in kind of a weird position where the moon is not going to be super desirable right now because that Fusoya, that edge, they're going to get through everything on the overworld and the majority of the underworld. Uh, whereas John Burkhead, he's in a situation where he may not dip down and look for that character on the hook route. So eventually Mech is going to get a Cecil. I don't know that John's going to get a Fusoya based on how this is playing out. But if John finds the sword, will it matter? No. <laughs> it will not. If there's a crystal sword or even an Excal, it's going to make Fusoya far less relevant to your point. Not bad, just not the big hit we're looking for. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. For sure, no shortage of power. But not the tier 8 goodness that uh, that our runners are looking for. Oh, uh, there's a poison axe. Seed's over. <laughs> now we do have Mechalink uh, heading down to the Twin Harp, uh, picking a fight with a Dark Elf right now. Yeah, uh, going to do music. Uh, definitely don't hate it. It's an objective. So if you're going to do do music, I suppose this is the time when you should. Because it's an objective. Okay, I lied. Yeah, I, I still hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, you could get that, that with a straight face, could you? <laughs> no, I could not. I guess this is about the time where we need to be quiet and let uh, DJ Spoonie B play some of his tunes. Yeah, something something contractual obligations. So enjoy, y'all. Not a bad pickup from the Twin Harp, aside from the objective. Yeah, definitely a, a decent pickup that's half of the way to Forge, yeah. which will be a sword for a Cecil. So not uh, not a bad pickup at all for our runners. And we, we know Mecha has to find a Cecil at some point. Kind of hard to avoid him when he's on the way to an objective. Accidental push be to jump? What? Oh, Harump turned on one of the best flags. Eh, it's a flag that exists. Flag lets you do fun things, break the game. Mostly break the game. 
And we do see Mechalink, uh, our first runner to go check the sealed cave. So we, while we have uh, Mechalink running down through Luca Cave, uh, we are going to have a reprise of music from John Burkhead. So once again, enjoy the tune, y'all. All right, and a bit of a filthy double here with the Baron key behind the sealed cave. That is a, a lot of objectives all at once coming for our runners. Mechalink, though, finding a Valvalis. This is unpleasant. Uh, yeah. It's very doable, but it's unpleasant. This is a speedy, speedy gal here in Valvalis. Uh, he's going to make it work for that Baron key. Perfect magic defense here, so uh, no slowing or any offensive spells from Fu. Yeah, the one thing here is John's going to have the advantage with the double Zerker setup with both Edge and Cecil, uh, but going to be down a Blink Caster, which could be potentially an issue not having... Uh, that second source of blink. However, opting to head to Dwarf Castle instead of chasing the objective. So maybe we're looking for a potential anchor pickup. Uh, maybe trying to get rid of this Yang in favor of someone who's going to do more for the party by doing less. But it looks like uh, looks like the doctor was here. Maybe it was time for Lucas checkup. Is that Laura now, or it's Dr. Luge is a pediatrician now? In this alternate universe, sir. Okay. I don't know if I want my uh, my pediatrician or my child's pediatrician to also be uh, a robot-building scientist, <laughs> but it's a timeline that exists. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Even doctors eat hobbies. And we see that the Val on Mechalink's side is... And this fight's a slog, turning into a slog, and those weaks are... Val seems to be uh, very t targeting extremely well with the weak, followed by Punch. Yeah, but shouldn't be too much longer in this fight. Uh, this edge is still just moving very rapidly, and going to be able to get through this fight pretty quickly. Uh, the difference is how much longer is this fit, fight going to take than it will for John when he eventually goes down there. And can that Fusoya make up some ground in other spots for Mecha? Uh, we know that the answer is yes, that Fu will make up ground, but will it be enough to counteract this fight, which is taking a fair bit of time? Well, if you want an anchor, there it is. Yeah, and I, I agree with this play, getting rid of Yang here. Yang is the third Berserker by a mile on this party. 
Uh, I really think this is heads up from John going with the traditional for this flag set, two Zerker, one white mage, or Fusoya instead of a white mage, as he kind of does both, um, and an anchor. I think this is pretty well done uh, from John here. As much as some folks love their Yangs, especially once they get some levels, that's going to be fantastic long term for him. Uh, speaking of fantastic long term, though, Mechalink is through that Val. So very well done navigating that fight. Uh, not an easy one with how fast that Val is at that spot. 66 agility there. Not to be trifled with. Not at all. That's a, it's a dangerous spot. It, fortunately, the Adamant Armor is meant Val. That spot's not terribly punchy, so Val can only do one damage per swing to an Adamant Wearer. Yeah, the, the only potential issue with that, of course, is if everyone else dies and your edge, in that case, gets weaked and then punched once or twice, even if you're getting hit for one damage, that still eventually will knock you out. So good that uh, our our runners are able to get through that. And Dwarf Castle also with an objective. So we are now an Earth Crystal away from go mode for us in the booth. Uh, this seed very rapidly moving our runners towards uh, all the required things. Uh, we know that Earth Crystal could still be buried, you know, at the Ogopogo spot, maybe behind an alt gauntlet. One can only hope. <laughs> we don't want to just... We want our runners to show off, but we don't want to be too easy, then they can't show anything off. Exactly. Got to throw a little spice in here. Yeah, okay, the Odin was a little bit of spice. Yeah, I was going to say, that was probably as much spice as our runners realistically wanted, given that that Odin caused six wipes <laughs> on the flag set, where you normally don't see six wipes uh, between the two runners in total. So probably, uh, you know, both runners still feeling it from that, thinking that they're playing from behind, that there's an issue at hand. Uh, in John's case, also having done all of Eblin, and coming away fairly empty might also be feeling a little bit of a, a pinch on time here. Um, the chat bringing up a point of John also might struggle a little more with this fight because he's going to be relying on Porum for all sources of blink, heal, and healing. It's going to put a lot of pressure on one character to really do a lot of carrying here. Uh, but he is perfectly anchored. That is the one benefit that he has. So we'll see which way, which uh, you know, works out in the end. Uh, is it going to be the anchoring, or is it going to be just having more viable characters for this exact fight for Mecha? I think it's just going to be the superior offense. Yeah, I, I think so as well. That having those two Zerkers just chugging away for probably a thousand plus a fight uh, or a swing is going to to pay dividends. Um, but we shall see. A lot of it depends on the initial attacks and such. Like, if Porum gets weaked right away, that is worst-case scenario. Ideally, the weak goes straight to right there. Yep. Val playing nice. And Tessel and Edge, not so much. Is that a blink on Ridia? I'm not... It was. That's interesting. Might want warp. That's a good point. Yeah, warp could definitely help here. Um... Hmm. She's going to get a lot of XP from this, though, and it's going to ruin the anchoring, so... That's... That's interesting. I do count nine key items, so we're not quite getting it doubled. I guess with the thought of having a Sand Ruby available, and it being an objective, possibly thinking, yeah, I can pick up another Anchor, no big deal. Uh, let's take the warp now and uh, and get out of here. Meanwhile, Mechalink making quick work of the Dark Elf in the Baron Castle 1 fight, and the Kainatso in the Baron Castle 2 fight, which I believe is vanilla, right? That, is, there? that is, in fact, vanilla. All right, something, something, uh, Dathis, or Zoe Vanillion, or I guess Harumph. Uh There's ah. a cane 
And Mechalink says, give me that cane. Yong, you're out. I have a feeling Mechalink's going to shortly thereafter say, give me that Cecil cane, you're out. Well, I think there's still some more to do on Earth for uh, for Mecha. Dwarf Castle, potentially Fey March, the Baron Basement. Yeah, Odin Spot, still uh, there. Yeah, I don't think we're getting a Cecil check for a little bit yet. But yeah, John Burkhead threw that Val. That was definitely a faster fight uh, and does pick up warp on the kid as well. So uh, yeah, I think that anchoring definitely paying off a bit there. And there's Forge. So as soon as John does Baron, he is going to have access to an X scout for that Cecil. Uh, the longer now Mecha goes without checking the moon, <laughs> the the... <laughs> Oh, this is such a strange race with the ebb and flow of this. Yeah. John having to take a tent there in order to warp out because Riddy only has 10 MP. Let's do warp casts. Got to do what you got to do. But I imagine we'll see John Perkett shortly follow Mechalink's footprints because do your objectives. Yeah, there's no reason to fade the objectives. Uh, and we know that this is Mylon Z. Going to be punchy, but... Oh no, this is Mylon and Friends, I'm sorry. I don't think we've seen either Mylon form yet. We just we saw an Elements earlier. That's what it was. I'm mistaking seeds and I haven't even run any. <laughs> well, you know, you got your Advent thing going on. You're probably watching 10 seeds a day. Something like that, Absolutely. It's this Mylon. You've got an admin armor on this Mylon's free. Yeah, the lit one's only going to deal one. Down here, I think the punches can only deal one. Or if you got a sork robe on, those lit ones only deal one. That's true. And we just see Edge zerked up. Kane's going to do. Whatever Kane does, I don't know. Betray the party, I think that's it. Betrayal can be fun, right? It certainly can, but only people aren't expecting it. Oh, that's true. I guess it's no fun if you just do it. <laughs> and, and they if, know. Yeah, if you got a reputation for betraying, it just doesn't get, it's not fun anymore. Oh my, a pan coming from Baron Basement. This this overworld and this underworld just loaded with value. Uh, that, again, is going to further drive Mechalink away from that uh, that Cecil that's on the moon. But it may drive Mechalink back to doing Dwarf. Yeah, I, I would definitely see a Dwarf check in Mechalink's future. Um, especially with the Forge on the table. Character checks do become a little more important. Um... Knowing that Dwarf could house a Cecil might be a driving factor because as good as Fusoya is, and as good as that Edge and that Cane are, Dwarf would be pretty appealing if it can yield a, uh, a Cecil to wield an Excalibur. And we've seen Excalibur Cecil Berserking can easily do four or 5,000 a swing. Oh yeah, it's basically nuke on a stick, which is uh, a pretty good thing. We see John going for basement first here. Uh, a potentially risky play with Wyvern still on the table, uh, but opting for what can save time uh, by, by routing this in first, knowing that both of these are objectives. So going to have Rydia heading into the middle here. Uh, not dropping battle speed. Okay, there we go. He is dropping battle speed just to Good play it a little safe. And realizes there was no reason to be worried. And I think chat pointing out he may feel behind at this point because of I... that uh, that Odin situation. Because this is, uh, again, one of those kind of risky plays. I, I, I agree. I think both our runners are feeling the pressure. But we do have Mechalink uh, has turned in the pan. Uh, I... 
admittedly missed what it, it was, was a life staff. A life staff. Oh, I mean, that's good for Fusoya and or Porum, so our runners won't be too dismayed by that. Uh, and then we are going to get this pan turn into Sheila. And if this is the Earth Crystal, that should just flat out go mode for our runners. So we are going to see an apple. That's uh, an item that exists. So the pan is uh, just a waste of time. And Mechalink saving underground means we're getting either Fey March or Dwarf here uh, rather than heading to the moon. I. Well, we know that there's only one key item left, so I would agree with Fey March there. You, you don't want to leave. You only potentially leave the Earth Crystal behind. Yeah, I think this is a it's a super awkward situation that our runners find themselves in because you want to go to the moon to do your objective, but the white spear is at the bottom of the moon. And I know that we always say chase your objectives, turn in your freebies and things like that. But when presented with the option of chasing exactly an objective that's at the bottom of the moon, who I don't know. I don't know what the right call is there. Is I think a, I would look to stay on Earth, but it's tough. And this is a much easier call. Well, also our runners don't have the pass. That's true. Without the pass, uh, it's even harder to want to go and complete that uh, that full moon check. Then, ideally, at least ideally, I would want to find the Earth Crystal here, then just go to the moon and walk straight down. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see some adamant swapping going on here for Mecha has said, let me put the adamant on Fusoya and take it off of Edge. This is uh, Mechaling trying to hit a stone here. And we shall see if this play works out. Uh, definitely a heads up plan. Everyone else is going to explode here or probably explode. Fusoya does land that off slot stone. So Mecha is going to be the first one to give us a peek at what there is from this king spot, and then likely also going to give us a peek what's from that Golbez. Uh, that is a spoon, so eh. It, it's a dart, and you're not you're not upset to see it. No, not at all. And with the adamant armor. Uh, going now back over to Edge. This fight with uh, with Golbez is effectively free. So we are going to, to be guaranteed a peak here. Uh, unless for some reason there's no Star Veil that goes off for Mecha and Edge gets virused, but I, I can't see a world where well, he just doesn't up the Star Veil. <laughs> yeah, because the Adamant armor makes you immune to the hold gas. Yeah, and the, the instant death from the snake, so... That there's, yeah, we should be seeing a full Fey March clear here for Mecha, and a pretty quick one too, very efficiently through this, uh, making up a little bit of that time from the early wipe to this Golbez where he did attempt uh, to get through it and was unsuccessful. I think you may appreciate what John Merck had tried to do. I attempted a crumble skip on the Kenatsu by Kamikazeing, but a little short on damage. Yeah, don't hate the attempt, um, but you know, didn't work out. <laughs> Does pick up a cane, uh, maybe as an anchor, maybe just to have. Uh, if he has a drain sword or a drain spear, cane does make quite a good anchor. But without, uh, he's he's another character that can do a thing or two. And we do see Mecha has the veil up on Golbez. Golbez reflecting lit three for fifty six hundred damage, fire two for twenty four hundred. Lots of reflected damage coming out uh, on this Golbez. Meanwhile, John Burkhead does pick up his adamant and is likely going to head straight to the forge and go get himself a shiny sword for a paladin. I I don't see any other, any other play here. Straight down. Get the slightly the slightly smaller stick. Yeah, but Adamant Excal Cecil, that's still uh, <laughs> that's still easy mode to get through a seed. So, uh, yeah, going to be very happy to pick that up. And Golbez rewards us with a Zeus Gauntlet. So the Fey March is a bust, 
Uh, with John Burkhead being underground already, though, and knowing what's there, he may opt to complete that too, though. Uh, and, there's a very realistic chance that that he still wants to go through, complete those checks. Uh, as he has done everything, I believe, now except for that Fey March, where Mega has done everything except for Dwarf? I believe that's true. And in John Burkhead's case, I agree with this, because you're one key item away. Well, I guess uh, Keyless Tower has not been done. That is correct. Thank you, Groundflyer, for that. Uh, Groundflyer, our tracker, doing a wonderful job uh, keeping us in line here in the commentary booth. Uh, behind the scenes, of course, Harumph rolling this fantastic uh, Magnus required, a Twin Harp required seed. Uh, Dave being a wonderful co-commentator, of course, keeping me in line. And uh, to our runners, John Burkhead and Mechaling, putting on a heck of a show for y'all. Uh, doing uh, doing a great job. Make sure to give everybody a follow uh, who is involved this evening. They're all fantastic runners, commentators, and behind the scenes folks. And we can't and we and we can't discount my co-commentator Postmorpheus. Uh, extremely knowledgeable about the game. A great runner. Just all around great person. Too kind. Too kind. Oh, John Burke had never hasn't realized that Sheila's got the bads yet. Yeah, now this is interesting because when he gets back up to the overworld, he may opt to stay there. Well, we shall see. There's no save that I saw get left for John Burkhead here. So if he goes to the moon, he will be ahead. Whereas if he goes back to the Fey March, he will be air quotes behind but charging with an Excal Adamant Cecil uh, through the moon. Whereas I don't know that Mecha would pick up that Cecil at this point, even with the forge on the table because of the flight time back and forth. Uh, I personally would, because Excal Adamant Cecil is that guy. But I can see a world where not every runner would make that pick. And it's a very defensible position. Okay, John Burkett did drop a save outside. Outside football, that was it. I didn't realize where the last save was. Oh, that's right. We do have the Sand Ruby to turn in as well for John. So going to give us, I believe, our first peek at the character here in Kaipo. While Mechalink is making quick work of this dwarf castle. Uh, and is just awaiting his Sand Ruby as well. That is a Rosa. That's some uh, more vanilla. Can't give the pan to Rosa. That's that's for Yong. But <laughs> uh, hey, let's work on him up. We'll work on you. Whack. <laughs> yeah, Rosa especially unhappy with Cecil after that, and uh, that is a no to Kane. Uh, I think we're seeing another anchor swap here. I don't think this Rosa is going to be lifted off the turf. Uh, she does start with eight agility, so makes for a fantastic anchor as well. But this is going to be kind of the million dollar question here is, does John Burkhead go Fey March or go Moon? Uh, personally, I'd go Fey March, but... And I would be making what we know to be the wrong choice. Looks like John is going Moon, which we know, unless it's exactly Keyless Tower, which Mecha is doing. Mecha leaving no stone unturned on Earth. Uh, this... I know that we are still a ways from a victor being declared in this seed, but if the Earth Crystal is here, this is Mecha Link's to lose. If the Earth Crystal is not here, this is probably John Burkhead's to lose. So this is kind of going to decide a lot of the match right now. You know, as much as we want to keep drama built in the entire way through, one way or the other, there's going to be a huge advantage for one runner, and we will know that in... Probably a, a minute to, to two minutes time. I'm, I'm hoping for something like Earth Crystal behind a chain that starts, you know, maybe on the moon just to keep things spicy. Yeah, if it's like all gauntlet at Ogo Pogo, I don't think you just take that first dive down. I think you do everything else, including then going back to the Fey March if you're John, leaving maybe a save somewhere up on the moon. But. I don't see how you take that. In Mecha's case, having done all of the Earth, 
he would have much more impetus to do that because the only gating key item he has other than the earth crystal is exactly the tower key. So this is one where it, it's by no means over, but one runner will have an advantage unless it's like exactly something absolutely gross at the Ogopogo spot or even maybe a crystal sword I'll go with. Oh yeah, I don't want to deal with those fatal eyes. I don't think anyone ever does. The fatal eyes and the blue dragons are just, ugh, <laughs> go those away. Those fatal eyes have way too much HP for what they are. Oh yeah, they're kind of like the vamp ladies in the sealed cave gauntlet. It's like, why? Why do you have almost 3,000 health during the fatal eye? I think it's what, 25 or 30,000? Yeah, I think it's 25. <laughs> they have more, they have health that rivals some of the bosses up here. Yeah. And in vanilla, good luck running from them. Oh, yeah. Now, meanwhile, we do have Mechaling chewing through uh, Leviathan here at the top of the tower. A relatively free boss, given that the magic yeah. up here is, uh, well, awful. Was uh, it one <laughs> roll, two rolls? Not a lot. So, yeah, it's one of those situations where this is going to be wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We're out of here. Uh, a couple of lit threes, a couple of swings from the Zerkers, and Mechalink is already through. So, so uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much it right here. Yeah, this is going to be huge. Uh, there's a poison axe that is a huge advantage over to John Burkhead should he stay the course on the moon. So, uh, <laughs> poison axe, not what so, you want. So now we know uh, it's somewhere up here, or something that gate that chains to it is somewhere up here. Yeah, moon is hard required for more than just the objective. So that that puts john in the driver's seat the i think now though you are going to see from mecha link a play to do something like top down or crystal sword altar first something like that uh we do see a wyvern here at the required white spear altar john's able to get one star Val off but that's still going to i think leave him at like battle speed one uh, this may be better to just reset now Agreed. and just come back with multiple living characters. Uh, but maybe he's able to get through this. Uh, a Bacchus, a little bit of creativity. Or still could be on like Battle Speed 3 from a prior fight. Uh, I... I'm not exactly certain if he ever changed back from doing the Baron Basement. Hey, remember those uh, Artemis arrows that were in Eblin? Yeah, but remember that Excalibur? <laughs> true it does i guess we don't have anything good to shoot the arrows with well looks like uh we're just getting full berserk on the team yeah Ber berserk up life roulette it wyvern can't kill more than one person at a time well and and now this is uh this is your jesus take the wheel moment brought to you by wyvern and three zerkers uh courtesy of john burkhead this fight ends one of two ways, and for John, it's probably going to be victory because Porum is going ham with Artemis arrows. Apparently, uh, Porum didn't forget those Artie arrows. Yeah, pew pew says the little girl with the the big bow and big arrows. What we all know, the best dragon slayers are six year old girls. <laughs> and how about another filthy double? Just do your objectives, forehead. Okay, <laughs> advantage John Burkhead. That was possibly the worst place the crystal could have been for Mechalink. Oh yeah, that is um, that is very not good. We do see a save coming here from John. I wonder if he's looking to do some sirens and hourglasses on gold dragons while he's up here, uh, and just get his grind on now rather than making an extra stop uh, for regular dragons on Earth. Maybe try to pull a hundred, uh, hundred. Uh, one more step. One more step, John. Yeah, that's. <laughs> So that's uh, going to mean that we're going to get some sirens on the earth now, because that's 180k that was just missed out on, unfortunately. Uh, so hopefully, uh, John remembers where those sirens were, which I believe were Dwarf Castle or Tamra, one or the other. Uh, they were somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Tamra, so hopefully, I think. He, yeah, Tamra sounds good. So I think he's going to need to uh, to grab the the sirens there and maybe do a couple more eggs. I wouldn't be comfortable with the party at these levels. Maybe if Porum gets above 1200 HP, you get a little more comfortable, but I don't think we're going to get there off of just one of these.
Yeah. The answer where we what, what would Johnny want to find from there? Pass. Yeah, pass would be the the big single key item that you'd be looking for from uh, doing the ribbon room. But I don't know that we're gonna see the pass. Uh, Are we going to the Crystal Sword Altar? Trap chest hunting? This is a little bit dangerous. Yeah, there's... That's one of the... One of the friendlier ones you can find. You still want to get an hourglass out here, though, because these warlocks will still do quite a bit of damage with their fire twos. And there's a, a downed edge right away that's really not what you want out of this. Uh, and this is kind of the scary part, is I don't know that this edge is going to be alive. Well, the edge can't be everyone's zerked. Well, no, that zerk I think was targeting uh, Cecil, who had already Bacchus. So yeah, we're not going to get XP on edge here. I think John's just going to have to go after this and just deal with a... Okay, well, there's oh, a crystal well. sword. Sure, why not? Uh, now you just go. <laughs> so forget the levels on Edge. He don't matter anymore. And uh, yeah, <laughs> who who cares about other characters? <laughs> yeah, just, you know, casually crack one treasure... One trap chest, find a crystal sword. Yeah. Yep. Well done. Better better lucky and good, as as the kids yeah. say. <laughs> T-Wild is traps, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yep. 60%, 64%, something like that on the moon, to have uh, a tier 8 item, and that just happened to be the tier 8 item that our runners wanted. But this, this goes to show you, like, even with that good fortune there, and how much extra Mecha has done... Like, Mecha's going to be going right for this yeah. objective. They're still very close, the runners are. Um, it looks like Mecha, Mecha has similar ideas. trap chest hunting also, yeah. So, hopefully Mecha opens the same chest, and, well, that's still good. Yeah, a little bit of fake Hanzo never hurt anybody. It, yeah, hopefully Murrah finds the Warlock carry chest. That's not the Warlock carry chest. Kind of an icky fight. Um, not really the best setup for this because behemoths are super punchy. Anyone who's not wearing an adamant armor is a little bit in trouble here. But well, if able to make through this fight, uh, Cecil's going to get the levels that I think Mech is after. And Blinks will make it so the behemoth can't just drop someone. Yeah, that's true. And with the Behemoth being super slow, I think they have like four agility. It's just the counterattacks you're going to have to worry about here and not the actual uh, typical actions oh, that Behemoths would take. And this setup, Mecha's got a nice setup here. Edges blink, uh, Porum's in critical, and Cecil's manually covering Fu with the item and armor. Yeah, so pretty well set up. And Edge is doing a, a non-zero amount of damage with 2,000 apiece here. So definitely going to be through this sooner than later. And there we are. Uh, nearly 120,000 XP coming through. And casual level 30 Cecil from one fight. As one does. And we have a Ruby at Zot 1 awaiting uh, John Burkhead. Couple swings here and this fight will be over. Fortunately, these counters aren't are not dangerous at all. No, this is a situation where Cecil literally can't die here with the adamant armor on. Uh, the glares will do one, the punches will do one. So I guess he could die in 2,380 actions from now. Um, so tomorrow, <laughs> if yeah. we AFK'd for like six hours. But yeah, that's uh, effectively a completely free fight. Uh, there's a Palum. Not going to be of any relevance to our, our runners. Uh, which I think also outside of Tella. Yeah, we'll see how Mecha handles the upcoming Wyvern. Sid, yeah. 
I don't think we've seen Sid, Tella, and and Palum, but now we've seen Palum. And that Wyvern for Mecha, see how he handles it. Uh, not well the first go around, but Cecil uh, does some dodging there. <laughs> At, that's one way to survive a Mega Nuke. Unfortunately, Mecha Link's not going to have the... the I don't believe Mecha Link's anchored and will not have those already arrows. Oh, got scared for a minute there. John Burke had almost dismissed his uh, Crystal Sword Cecil in favor of uh, of Tella. Whew. That was uh, that was scary right there, y'all. But does uh, does get rid of Rosa for Tella. I guess wants a slightly better anchor. Maybe another. It's an cast. anchor anchor that knows Cure Four. I think is a, a big the, thing. Yeah, that's a slightly better anchor part. And we get to see the longest crumble in the game. Yep, the lag master itself, pale dim, or p plague, plague. Excuse me. A plague <laughs> is a uh, showing one last bit of spite by making you sit through the that crumble. And Mechalink does seem to have the Wyvern in hand, just the uh, life for letting through it. Ooh, that edge must be level like 39 or something with that spoon damage. Yeah, not too, too high a level, but there is uh, Zot being completed a wrist. A... Wow, a rat tail mixing words. They are hard. <laughs> Speaking. Words are bad. Math is hard. I don't yeah, know what to do. Speaking, I'm just a possum. <laughs> I mean, you're you're a very well educated possum. I mean, I've never heard a possum as a <laughs> speak at all, actually. Fair, fair. Uh, to answer questions from chat, do you check the rat tail for the pass? Uh, in in my estimation, absolutely not. You have like five spots on the moon plus the rat tail to turn in. I don't think that's uh, and in John's case, also a fam arch. And the top of tower, <laughs> there's like eight the different question, spots it could be. So I, I think, think the think question is, I think the question is, how far behind do you feel? Yeah, that's true. If you feel quite behind, then you probably take a stab at that. Uh, but if you feel okay, then I don't think you do. Uh, speaking of feeling okay or not okay, this is getting a little scary for Mecha as he is out of life potions, I believe. Uh, oh. While John Burkett's picking up some Bacchus wine to head down to the bottom of the lunar subterrain, uh, does Mecha have the ability yeah, to we'll get see. through this fight from here? This is uh, very touch and go. We've seen a few remedies go off already from Wyvern. Yeah, this is one of the dangers of not having an anchor uh, in the traditional sense of it, is that you end up in these kind of stalemate situations sometimes. And now depleted of that Fusoya being able to cast uh, life, it is down to just Porum. And as soon as Porum is down, there is no more. So no more life casters for Mechalink. This fight has to end now uh, from like this swing. And hopefully this goes on edge. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very long and unfortunate wipe here for Mecha. Gets a cure three off on edge at least, so maybe has one final dart that he can do. Oh, Wyvern says. Uh, Wyvern says uh, no more shenanigans. Yeah, that is uh, that is unpleasant for for Mecca. That's a, a long wipe. Going to try to get some levels, I think, from this uh, D lunar spot. Which we do see Antlion of because, of course, it's Antlion on the moon. That is not the fight you want if you're looking for some quick XP. That is, in fact, the exact opposite of quick uh, XP. So uh, I think Mech is just going to have to take another rip at this Wyvern on a lower battle speed. Now, I do know Mecha has. I do know Mecha bought a curse ring. Well, that's a good point as well. be able to equip that cursed ring i know he at least saw it i don't know if he got to equip it or not i i thought i saw him buy it of 
course, that was like an hour ago, and uh, yeah, a lot has happened <laughs> since then. But we do have John uh, making his final preparations. Probably feeling pretty comfortable about the Z fight, even though he has some fairly low levels, simply because Crystal Sword, Adamant, Cecil. Uh, yeah. That's the real deal. <laughs> so this is going to be a lot more comfortable than than we would otherwise think with other characters at this level. I can, uh, that I all being said, Zeromus cannot be moved anywhere else. Zeromus is too big and too bad. Uh, Dave, why don't we put Zeromus elsewhere? And and what kind of questions is chat trying to yeah, get we, us to, to answer right now? Well, you know, we don't put Zeromus anywhere because you know, he's scary. He's nasty. You don't want to see Big Bangs flying out of Antlion Cave. It would collapse the whole tunnel on you. That's why we fight Zeromus in this uh, amazing background. But I believe we have one question that uh, chat is asking us for and that is whose butt are we going to kick tonight and is it cute does it have a butt how many does it have how is the butt hopefully the butt is fantastic we know they're all fantastic that's true scholar kitty has done an amazing job uh, on so many of these fantastic butts that we get to see on a regular basis here on the Free Enterprise family of networks. Uh, it, it has pointed out by chat, could be Sephiroth. There is a greater than 1% chance it is Sephiroth. Uh, in this case, <laughs> <laughs> we have Senator Crocodile, uh, a, <laughs> a favorite of the community for sure. Yeah. This robot fight fought to you by the committee to re-elect Senator Crocodile. Senator Crocodile, he will only eat those from Fabul. Now we do see a moon veil going up on Porum here and a silk web coming out from Tella. Uh, this is a play so that if exactly that happens where Porum gets nuked, Porum doesn't die because she is your healer. Uh, very heads up by John to do that because now this fight goes from being potentially a big bang into medio type situation to being just you win the fight because you have the DPS, you put a single Cure 3 on Cecil, or a Cure 4 cast after this Big Bang, and you're going to be through, where it might have been very sketchy otherwise. May also opt for a Cure 3 manually on Deporum, and then a Cure 4 spreading across the rest of the party. Both are perfectly acceptable ways to go about it, but huge heads up on the Veil there on, uh, on Porum to make sure that the small child, who is the linchpin of this fight, uh, stays upright. Meanwhile, Mecha is through that wyvern, gets his earth crystal, uh, does have to complete the Tower of Zot, but is only probably one, maybe one and a half wipes away. So had that uh, that Moon Veil not gone up on Porum, Mecha would have been pretty close to back in this. Again, keep in mind, he did Keyless Tower and all of Fey March, yeah, so. and is still but one check behind. And so, Mechalink has run a fantastic race, just... Yes. John Burke had faded every... faded exactly the right things. Yeah. And it... that's the nature of Randos. Sometimes you get god-routed. Yeah. Uh, team Fey March, or Team Fade March won out over Team Fade Moon today. Uh, assuming that this fight does go John's way. That was an unnerfed Big Bang, and Cecil stands alone. Does Cecil get the job done? That's rocks. We need a dodge here. We get a dodge here. And that should do it. And that is, uh, that's gonna do it for John. GG's to John Burkhead. Cecil with the, the dodge, 125.43 as our winner. And uh, we will see if we can get John in here for an interview and see if he's uh, calmed down from the exciting finish uh, at the end of that race there. Oh, I I'm, I'm certain. Uh, I'm certain he was sweating throughout that entire the moment that meteor popped up. Oh yeah, that that's a little bit nerve wracking because I doubt he expected to see that second big bang, so probably got a little caught off guard by it. 
Because I figured with the damage he was outputting, there wasn't going to be one either. So, uh, I, I'm with you. I thought that was just enough to avoid the combo platter. Yeah, to see two big bangs and a medio with a crystal sword at him and Cecil is a little surprising. But we are joined by our winner and confirmed play-in racer now uh, after this tiebreaker, John Burkhead. GG's to you, sir. GG's. Thank you very much. So first question, I mean, first two questions. One, have you recovered from the emotional roller coaster that was that Z fight? Oh my god, not just the Z fight. There are like, I, I gotta see if like I can buy lottery tickets. I mean, the amount of things that just that just worked out in that seed after when they had no, no reason to whatsoever. Um, but I'm good. I'm good. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. No, the answer is no. <laughs> right. Well, good to hear. The second question, and I apologize, Dave, I'm beating you to the punch on this one. Uh, so how about that crystal soul? Yeah, uh, so, um, you know, yeah, I, I watch your stream a bunch and, you know, a lot of a lot of the established runners. And it's amazing how many times I say, oh, wow, I learned something new in Free Enterprise. And today, today I learned that if you are standing in a doorway because this game is perfectly <laughs> coded, and you go ahead and use a siren, it will not work. And here I'm thinking, all right, Johnny boy, you're gonna be efficient. Brother, don't take that step, you know what floor it is. And then womp, womp, womp. So I was like, well, okay, so uh, let's take a trap chest and maybe we get, maybe we get an admin. And, uh, you know, um, and I got a, a shiny, shiny. So I was like, all right, well, that helps, I guess, but. Uh, again, lottery ticket. Got to. I got to go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, well played. It's always good to learn those things. Uh, a little scary to learn them in a live race environment, of course. But we'll say that uh, that area of opportunity led you to to greater things by uh by getting that crystal sword along with your xp um those were kind of the two things that i just wanted to, to bring up at the end there i thought y'all both ran a really smooth race um fusoya happened to be on the eblin uh, eblin cave hook route by the way which we were curious if you were going to dive to pick him up obviously you would not have known he was there and by that time you had a fairly well kitted out cecil and edge so didn't really have a ton of reason to go there but uh, definitely made for a very interesting race between you two. Yeah, uh, um, if, yeah. <laughs> if, if I hadn't found Bacchus wines, I was probably going to dip in there, but when they were for sale on the moon, I was, like, I was, I was, I was pretty content with the party that I had and uh, decided to try to save a little time. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Um, so looking forward, uh, I guess we, we got to bring up the, the obvious. You have uh, another opponent coming up. You're not into brackets yet. You have managed to get yourself to a, a winning record in the group and made yourself the the clear-cut now third-place finisher in the group. What kind of words do you have for your future opponent? Uh, how do you feel about them? And I guess as Chad is pointing out, uh, what are your goals for potential brickets instead of brackets? <laughs> um, you know, if Plumeria wasn't so obnoxiously nice, I could go in with like a mentality like, oh, I'm going to get him. It's nice and good and smart you know um you know the insight that he has in chat is uh is phenomenal and uh, uh he beat me pretty good um in in our, our first one um and uh i was i was uh i was pretty upset about it because I, I i didn't play well at all in the forfeiting um and he was kind and gracious so um you know it's uh it's i this is further than i thought i would get um, you know, case in point with like my disasters at Baron Inn, you know, using a Bacchus instead of an hourglass, like there's, there's, you know, my menuing is, is not crisp. There's, there, there's a lot that I, I, I still need to get better at if I'm going to be, you know, legitimately competitive at this game. Um, and Plumeria does all those things. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I feel like I'm kind of playing with house money at this point and, uh, I'm just riding it. And if, uh, you know, if I manage to somehow get into brackets, I mean, that'd be, that'd be amazing, but um i'm gonna try to enjoy uh my luck with this one and uh practice a little bit and see what happens yeah, absolutely well you know job well done you've uh you've done a fantastic job to get to this point 
as a relatively newer runner to be as good as you are as quickly as you are i think uh, speaks volumes to you not being able to just take information that's available but also process it and apply it uh so i think uh definitely deserve to be complimented for that but now that i've stolen the mic from uh from dave this whole time, uh, <laughs> hey dave what do you got for our friend uh john burkhead here i just was one actual one thing you did mention your adventures in baronin did that influence your routing the rest of the seat at all did it make you did that influence your fading of the fey march at all um no uh i mean you know you start with with what was it yang uh yang and uh, porum um and i i kind of hit pay dirt by going over to damsian because i was kind of hoping for i was looking for like a heron robe or some arrows and then you know power shirt and 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 i forget what else was in there. i was like oh okay well th this helps um, but still, that doesn't make, you know, my, my opening party is still Porum and, and, uh, and, and Yang. So I saw Edge and I was like, ooh, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, shiny, 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 let's get one, let's get, let's get one of those. One of those will help make everything go fast. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my way of kind of trying to cheese, uh, the early fights was with the illusions, but you can't do that with, uh, with, with Odin, uh, for all the obvious reasons. Um, and, uh, I had forgotten that I had lit arrows, but then, even if I had remembered, you know, Porum kind of kept getting knocked down. So, um, with the disaster that was that whole thing, I I felt behind the entire time. I just felt behind the entire time. And by the time I got underground, um, the reason I did dwarf first was I needed an anchor again because I had I had the Luka key, but it's so fast that with the party I had, I had to I had to get rid of uh, I had to get rid of young. Oh, excuse me. So um, you know I went to dwarf, uh, got an anchor. And then, you know, went to Luca, and then I just kept following the chain, you know, do your objectives and follow the chain and follow your freebies. And um, I was prepared to go back to Fan Marsh, but it just never happened. Makes perfect sense to me. That's all I, that, that's all I, I have for you, uh, Dr. Burkhead, uh, possibly anything else? No, just once again, uh, very well raced. Uh, other than the the struggles which you both had with that Odin, uh, very clean, job well done. I know you're going to be your own biggest critic, but I think when you watch this back, you'll be pretty happy, uh, you know, with with how you ran that. Even if in the moment, every potential decision looms large. So, you know, be proud of what you've accomplished here, uh, and we definitely look forward to. To getting to see you run again do you have any ideas when your match with uh, plumeria will be other than sometime in the future so we can watch some more of you um i i believe we have a uh david b put together this beautiful spreadsheet for us uh, in the arty group also already 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 bow hype uh, I, I love our group um so between david and mecca everything got incredibly uh, incredibly uh, organized and um uh, which we call it. Um, I believe that plumeria is free on Saturdays. Um, I've got the kiddo um, tomorrow and Thursday, uh, and I have a date on Friday. So I'm hoping that uh, he's still free on Saturday afternoon. But that's something that we'll go ahead and figure out. And once it's scheduled, uh, y'all know on the, on the Discord. Well, have fun with the kiddo uh, the next few days. Enjoy the date, my friend, and uh, we will probably see you back then Saturday. Uh, for uh, a second date in two days with uh, with Plumeria, then. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, thank you so much for uh, doing comms, uh, Dave and Possum, uh, Harumph for, for the restream, and I'm sorry I can't see who's who's tracking, but I know what a underrated uh, but ever so important job it is. Um, I'm so grateful for the admin team uh, from like uh, running a great race and uh, for everyone watching. Excellent. Well, thank you again. Uh... John Burkhead, again, great job on the race this evening. We will uh, we'll see you next time once you are uh, facing Plumeria. And we wish you the best of luck. We wish both of you the best of luck in that race. Should it be Saturday, Sunday, or whenever it ends up being. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, good night, everyone. Good night. All right, folks, and that was our first place finisher this evening, securing third place in the Artemis Bow Group. Uh, John Burkhead, with a, again, winning time of 125.43. Uh, meanwhile, Mechalink has 
gone through, gotten his crystal, has opened a couple boxes on the moon, uh, has gotten the XP that he wanted, and is now making his way down the lunar subterrain, uh, going to fight Zeromus, uh, and give us a second dose of uh, of who's that butt. Yeah, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, the re-election train comes back. Yeah, I think uh, if Senator Crocodile follows any of the rules of uh, American politics, then there's a whole lot of uh, a lot of time for that re-election to happen. I think it's what uh, three different times uh, that he's he's uh, eligible. I don't know, something like that. It's hard to keep track of. Oh, all Senator that. Crocodile, uh, <laughs> how long do crocodiles live? That's a good. I mean, crocodiles live pretty long. Plus, they are also unchanged for like a hundred million years. They're kind of like perfectly built to defend the environment they live in so uh yeah crocodiles alligators all of those they kind of just do what they do they do it very well and you have to to be to be unchanged for millions of years yeah, it looks like mechalink gotta... opting to take uh one of these red giant chests and looks like edge uh falling victim to being previously yeah, adamanted was... and no longer taking a casual uh 1700 I... damage from it... an emission i did not know emission could hit that hard uh it normally doesn't <laughs> uh berserk now in chat with the important information crocodiles live about 70 years so Senator Crocodile can serve many a term. Yeah, Senator Crocodile will be fine. We have Cure 4 on Porum. We have three more levels on Cecil. Hey, the how second about crystal a sword crystal on the moon. sword? The moon having two shiny sticks, in case you missed the first one. And a cursed ring going on Fusoya, making him a five agility anchor gonna make this fight very easy for Mechalink to get through this uh, this Aromas. A Sork Robe, a Protect Ring, a Life Staff, a Wizard Hat, uh, excuse me, a Ninja Hat for this uh, this Porum. She's gonna be well defended. Uh, I guess not putting Fu in the middle? Okay, there we go. Fusoya in the middle now. And we should be seeing some sparks fly for this Z fight as well. Yeah, this Mechalink coming in with more levels than John Burkhead did. We're going to see... We, and I believe more gear on the edge. I think Mecha yes. found the fake Hanzo. So we shouldn't see second Big Bang on this side. I say that, and we're going to see it. I mean, we thought we weren't going to see it the first time also, but hey, here we are. <laughs> Just goes to show neither of us are good at predicting the future. I can't read. I can't do math. I can't predict the future. Thankfully, at least, I guess I have free enterprise to fall back on. I don't know. <laughs> and you've got a... And you've got this fantastic uh, dumpster trash can thing. That's true. Everybody likes a good old uh, trash can. Well, at least I do. And if all things... If all fails, you could just, you know... Be chill and hiss at people when they get too big, too close. I think that's what possums do. Something like that. Kind of just hang out, hiss at people, eat leftovers, find the nearest coziest dumpster. I mean, sounds like a good life to me. Yeah, not bad. Not even bothering to zerk up the edge on Mechlink's side. Gonna just throw the kitchen sink at Senator Crocodile. Yeah, with a spoon with uh, an Excal, it's probably better to dart them initially than it is to zerk right away. Uh, you're going to get more out of your actions that way unless Edge is doing a ton. Uh, oh. However, it is usually advisable to nerf the opening Big Bang. Um I don't know, yeah, if, you know if that was intentional or not, just based on the HP that's available, but that was a super high roll there. I don't think uh, that was intentional. Fu had queued up a silk web. 
Uh, yeah, so unfortunately just didn't get that silk web off. Uh, we are going to see a silk web come out now. We'll see where this lands. But we are going to see it go on to Edge, who could die here, but doesn't, thankfully. Uh, and we just still have Cecil just uh, chunking away at this uh, this Aromas, or the Senator crocodile -ness. Well, shout out to Porum. 1400 XP, face tanking an unnerfed 9-roll Big Bang. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, that was part of the gear that we had alluded to with, you know, the wizard robe, I think it was, the life staff, the protect ring, I believe. A lot of good gear. Still probably, on average, falls over there, but that's a lot of uh, magic evade on that small child, plus the levels. Uh, and again, walks off another one. So, you know, Porum is still the linchpin for both of these runners' fights here, where without Porum, it would be a little sketchy. But able to just do Porum things with yep, much I lower can't. health than Rosa. <laughs> I can't explain it. <laughs> nope, because she doesn't have functionally better magic defense or magic evade than Rosa. She just doesn't take as much damage. I mean, obviously, this isn't empirically you know, proven. But for me, she just doesn't take as much damage. It's the wildest thing. And just like that, the fight is over. <laughs> so GG's to Mechalink, finishing in second. Uh, does finish fourth in the Artemis Boat group, but a very tough, hard-fought group. And I believe with that ding in our ears, we are joined by Mechalink. Uh, GG's to you, Mecha. Thank you. GG's to John. And just wanted to, to say, like, you ran a very clean, uh, very well-run race. Uh, you both had your, your trials and tribulations with that Odin. Um, but you did a lot more in the way of checks. You did the Keyless Tower. You did Fame Arch and things like that. Um, you know, in another seed, it would have paid off. I know that in previous interviews, we've talked that it's been a, a tournament of coin flips for you. Yeah. Uh, and it just seemed like this was, unfortunately, another one to add to the list of coin flips that didn't turn out in your favor. Yeah, I mean, I could have done better with that Odin. Um, uh, there were a couple of those losses were, were silly. Um, I wasn't well set up for the my attempt at Golbez that I tried. Um, I shouldn't I shouldn't have done that. Like I wasn't I and the theory is that that you can do that, but um, that spot is way too fast for that. Um, but other than those things, I felt really good about what I did. I liked how my Eblin castle looting was very technical, um, right? Like, and I think I got a lot out of that with the minimal amount of wasted time. Um, right, like, it wasn't a full Eblin loot. Um, well, like, I did, I did a, except for a sealed cave, I think I did my checks when I could crush them, um, to speed things up. Um, that seal cave, that Val fight was long, um, and I assume to some degree that John had a Murasame at that point, um, and wasn't rocking a ninja long. Is that accurate? Uh, I don't think he had a Mura, he had Cecil though. Yeah, okay. he had yeah. double ninja and a defense sword adamant armor Cecil, and then a power shirt edge. Um, he had found a power shirt early on in the Damsian basement, uh, hadn't peeked uh, Baron in, so didn't have the knowledge of the edge, so wasn't driven to loot Eblin like you were. So y'all took very different opening paths, um, and we thought both were appropriate for the knowledge that you had. Uh, yeah. Looting Eblin, we thought, was a very heads-up play with the knowledge of the edge being there, because it's just a treasure trove of goodies for edge and Eblin Castle, generally. Yeah, generally. Um, and, oh, hitting Cecil that or much earlier would have been, yeah, that's perhaps another big thing. My Cecil came late. Um, yeah, you did have the Fusoya, though, that he never picked up, so that did balance out. And mm -hmm. if you go back and watch this, you'll see, even in the booth, we were trying to figure out who was ahead at various times. It was that right. close for a very long time. Uh, just the, the end portion... Yeah. Yeah. Where you started doing the, the ancillary checks on Earth and John faded them, that's where the gap just widened. But to right. that point, it was incredibly close. Like the two of you were very well matched. Uh, I, and I think it was pretty close the last time y'all raced as well. Yeah. No, it was last time was, was similarly kind of 
kind of close. Um, but yeah, I felt I felt like in essence, right? Like, so let's say that I skip those those um, like Fey March checks checks and go to the moon, right? In essence, I'm doing the moon. I'm doing checks as good as Fey March, except that I know those Fey March checks are jokes, yeah. right? Like, so so in essence, it's like, am I going to go all the way to the moon? Do white spear almost always miss, right? Like on the key item I need, right? Like, and then start doing more moon checks, right? Like with unknown bosses, like for example, that ribbon room. Oh my god, um, like Ant Lion at <laughs> ribbon room is exactly the opposite of the check you want to be doing, right? Yeah. Um, so it's like, okay, right? Like the odds are likely that, right? Like this is basically just as good as doing two moon checks, and I can tear it down, right? And so that's exactly what I did. Right, like, and it just didn't pay out. And so I'm fine with that, right? Like, if, like, I, I think that's a very reasonable odds play if it didn't pay out, you know, such is life. Um, uh, and if you go back and watch the broadcast, we alluded to that as well, that, you know, the this is a situation where you probably do fade your objective because it's exactly one key item you're looking for. And it's a long run down the moon and you've got a lot of other stuff you can take care of that the Golbez was free, the imps were free, Right. There was a lot to do that you could clear very quickly versus the singularly focused objective. While mm -hmm. free enterprise, we love to say, follow your objectives. That's a hard sell. And, right. you know, I, I think we tended to agree with you on, on that sort of speculation on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it like, just, it didn't pay out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of a pure odds play. And yep. sometimes that doesn't, sometimes that doesn't work. Um, I mean, John's been doing well, right? Like, I got lucky to have him be knocked down to three and three, right? Like, so I could then face off with him again, right? Um, like, a lot of things had to break my way to get this shot at trying to win again. And, you know, you know, when it came down to it, that just didn't pay out. And now, you know, John, I always set it up so John gets to fight against Plumeria and has to beat him. So, not easy. <laughs> yes, never easy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, feel, I feel pretty good about managing to kind of claw my way into at least the tiebreaker. Um, so, because last week we were talking about, you know, kind of a long shot where it wasn't completely in my hands and things worked out. Yeah, you, you got back to a position where you at least had a chance. Um, and that seemed very long odds when you were at, at one and three. But then all of a sudden you were three and three and you, you had a shot at it. And that's yeah. all we can ever ask for is to just have that opportunity. So yeah. you did well to to get here. Uh, you did well in this race. Things just didn't break your way. Um, Dave, do you have anything for uh, you... for Mecha Link here? I oh, apologize for having yeah, the mic Mecca, again. <laughs> Mecca covered one well, the first thing I was going to ask already. So uh, I think the only mm -hmm. thing you, you did mention taking the fame march. If you'd had the pass in hand, would that have put you in a different direction? I'd have to think about it. Yeah. The odds calc is still the same, um, but the pass does make it so that one like you can keep checking the moon until you hit, and then you're gone. I don't know. That's that changes the math too much for me to think to know what my That's answer is. That's fair. But no, it's a good point, right? Like the pass, the pass has a has that sort of effect on That's on just... letting you do the moon. It lets you. It both lets you do the moon when you have stuff left on Earth that you can check, and it makes you want to do the full moon, right? Like, and those ah. two, like, like it does both those things, right? Like, we've okay. seen it before, right? And so that, that's where I'm kind of like, the mental math is like, well, it's still the odds play to do them, but it's hurts I was just, less, right? I was wondering if that influenced your math at all. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely influences the decision because, like you say, like I said, right? Like, um, but it's... It's close. Um, I think once we're down to, once I do dwarf and we're down to exactly one key item, right? Like, so it's like, say I skip Fey March, but I do dwarf, right? Like, and I'm down to exactly one key item, right? Like, I think I go back to Fey March, right? Like, because, right? Like, and that makes sense, right? And so, like, either way, I think I end up, even with pass, I think I get pushed back to Fey March, right? Although, if I do dwarf first, I don't think I do tower. I don't know, maybe again, like, I didn't know it was at the top of tower that could have been uglier than it was. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, it's one of those things where the decision, all the math is done in your head in the moment. <laughs> and then afterwards, That's very you're fair. Like, and then afterwards you're like, oh yeah, no, the math totally checks out. And like, you didn't do the math and like <laughs> instantaneously. No, if you just, 
Nope, you're in race mode. You just go, go, go. Right. I mean, you're doing the math approximately in your head, right? But you're, right, like... Um, anyway. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Past definitely changes things a bit. Um, but yeah. No, but we, your because... logic makes 100% sense to me. That was just mm -hmm. me being curious. No, it's and it's a good question. Like, I think it's totally a good question to ask about the past. Um, because, like I said, like, the past does two very big things that were relevant there. Right. It's just because our key item needs were so low, it suddenly becomes like you want to slam every single check you have access to. Right. And so, right, like just because any one of them turns you on, turns it on. Right. Like, so it's just like, boom, boom, boom. Where like knock out all those checks fairly quickly and none of them paid. I'm like, OK. <laughs> so. Well, that is going to be uh, the the end of your run in this tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. Since that is going to be the last time we'll see you restream this tournament, do you have any, uh, you know, parting words for your group, for the the behind the scenes folks, the admin team, the the other competitors, any plans for free enterprise for you going forward? Uh, kind of let you have the the stage to uh to give um, us all kind of your your thoughts and plans. Um, Artemis Bow Group, I couldn't have asked for a better group. Every Everybody in that group, what they did ended up mattering, right? Like David B taking, right? Like going from 0 and 4 to 2 and 4, right? Like um, Blue Cat beating Plumeria, you know, be and then me beating Plumeria is what makes it that Plumeria is the one that they're playing off against, um, John's playing off against, right? Um, right, like we just, so many things happened. Right, every person in uh, an Artemis Bow group, like not even just in the games that we played, but in the games that they played between each other, like affected the route through, right, um, in meaningful ways. And so, um, that was that was a great, you know, it was a great group to be in. Um, yeah, um, and uh, best of luck to John going forward. Um, he's gonna have to see if he can beat Plumeria this time around. Um, uh, to get to fight against Luff <laughs> in the brackets. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm glad that coverage isn't as slammed anymore. Um, the coverage during the group phase was an, a very large amount of races to kind of put together narratives for the very small amount you could show. Um, so that couldn't have been an, an easy path to plan through for, for uh, restream leads. Um, now at least you get to cover pretty much you know most you got to cover a lot more um so uh and yeah i mean one thing that i recognized a couple of tournaments back was that you can't really take the season off right like the off season off and last off season i um uh i did troya tango uh with with pyre right like and so i'll be looking to try and find some way to at least com com keep from going completely rusty uh, during the time off before the next tournament, um, because you you can't you can't just take that time off anymore. People are you know people are are you know honing themselves to a fine edge in ladder and in other places, and you can't you can't ignore that and then come back and expect to not make you know small mistakes. Absolutely. Well, we we appreciate those words your insight as always um whether it be the technical side or the feedback side it's uh it's always appreciated to have that insight so i i do wish you the best of luck in the off season and uh, i hope we can see you again in the next tournament my friend thank you i hope everybody enjoyed the race since it sounds like it was close for most of it but that's usually what happens <laughs> absolutely well thank you again and ggs one last time a mecha link uh, and you have yourself a great rest of the evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. And that was Mechalink, our second place finisher this evening. Fourth place overall, right in the middle of the Artemis Bow group. Uh, that is going to complete our broadcast for today. However, please make sure before we go that you give our runners a follow for their fantastic showing this evening. And also make sure you give Groundflyer our tracker, Harumph our restreamer, my co-commentator Dave uh, a follow. Everyone did a great job this evening. Uh, and we will be heading over to the Free Enterprise channel for a race that is about five minutes away from getting started between Martin Broadcloak and uh, Zilch. 
two fantastic runners coming out of the Ograx group uh, doing their play-in for, I believe, uh, second place in the group, that's, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. This is just a play. This is a play-in game. This is not a tiebreaker. Yeah, so we will have uh, some fantastic action there. And also tomorrow, we have three races all restreamed. 6 o'clock Eastern, Simbu vs. Lady Id, which is a play-in race. Uh, Microcorgs vs. Dusty Griff uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern, which is on RPG Limit Break. Uh, that is going to be a tie-break race for first place in the Dragoon Helm group. And then Elven Sorrow vs. Irak at 9 o'clock, which is a play-in race out of, I want to say, the Aegis Shield group, if I'm remembering correctly. Elven Sorrow uh, Sarak, yep, that's Aegis Shield. Yeah, so I am very. I'm looking forward to watch that race for reasons. Uh, I believe you will be facing one of them. Exactly. <laughs> so that is uh, that's going to do it for us here in the booth uh, for this fantastic race in the Artemis Bow Group here on Free Enterprise Two. We are going to raid over to Free Enterprise, the flagship station for that race. Uh, Dave, take us away, my friend. Hey, well. Everyone, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you as always. Uh, enjoy the race coming up. It's with Easter racers. It's guaranteed to be guaranteed to be a good one. I know I'll be there watching it. And remember, y'all, no spoilers, or you will get a bonk. Bye now. <laughs>